Hello there, this is the third of three videos in a mini-series which is exploring parts of your C-sharp Windows Forms project. In the first video I talked about the different uh, pieces of code that make up your project in Visual Studio and then I ended with a little condensed version of what form1.cs would look like. In the second video I talked about uh, this method here, populate question controls, uh, the parameters that it would take and how some of the uh, functionality would work. And in this third video I would like to talk about the, the second uh, method that is really important in this quiz which I've called check answer. So what check answer does, as the name suggests, is that it compares the value of the text on the button with the value of the text in the array, in the array's sixth element, to determine whether or not they match. A little demonstration might be helpful here. So I start the quiz app. OK, up it pops. Uh, by way of a reminder, the actual quiz itself starts when I click that button there. And that uh, calls the um, populate question methods, which does a little check to see whether or not we need to ask a question or end the quiz. OK, so there's a counter running. And because we're at the start of the quiz, it asks the first question. And you'll remember that populate question answer populates the question number here, the question text here, and buttons one to four with the four possible answers. And I choose an answer. And what you have to remember is, is that there are four separate pieces of code, click events, associated with each of these buttons. And in each of those four click events, is a call to check answer. But of course this being um, object orientated programming, you only write the actual code out for check answer once and it just gets called from that place. But each one of these will call the check answer depending on which one that I check and it will have different um, data uh, input into it depending on which one I check. So I'm going to say it's 9 and as I click that button the check answer method is called and runs and outputs uh, on the screen a text box and that happened to be the wrong answer. Okay the next question comes up I click on 2. Okay check answer is um, called from the uh, click event of that button and that is also incorrect. And this one, I guess, is that. And uh, that's interesting. I've got a little break point in there in my code, which uh, I must have left in there as part of debugging. So I'll stop that. It's actually, although that is a little bit of a gotcha that I've done there, um, that's actually quite interesting, that, because that shows you how you can debug your programs by inserting a break point. OK. I've started that again, but I didn't actually really need to. It's time to move on. OK, so let's just uh, check this summary here of what the method does. Check answer is a vital method. It will determine if the user pressed the correct button for the question's correct answer. If they have, the score must be incremented by one. If not, the score remains the same. How do you know which button was pressed? We put check answer method into the click event of each answer button. But it's only the button that's pressed that calls the click event and that compares the text of that button with the text of uh, the question. So for example that one that I was uh, just looking at was uh, the one about the tuna sandwiches and button three was the um, the answer was fish or something, wasn't it, before that break point. 
um, was invoked. And so if I click on uh, button three, for example, uh, that's this code here. This is the click event because it says click here. And I did explain what these meant in the uh, in a previous video. There it is. That's how you call a method. You just write out its name. And then in here, you put in some different parameters, which I'll talk about in a minute. The actual uh, code of it is um, right here. Private void check answer. Here I um, set out what I am expecting to go into it, and that's in explained on the next slide. But basically it's this. I'm expecting a string array. I'm expecting an integer. And I'm expecting um, a string that says... And I'm expecting a string that says and I'm expecting a string which I've called button text answer. So basically I'm taking the text that will appear here when the quiz is running and I'm putting it into this uh, method check answer, and I'm going to do a comparison with it here. If the if the text of the answer on the button is the same as what I pull out of the array, then we will do this because it's an if else statement. Otherwise, we will do this. So if they match, the message box comes up and says correct. And then I add one to the score of the quiz. And I also update the score on the form. And then here, this is the thing that keeps pushing the quiz into the next question. And I've called it question row. You could call it question number or something like that. Um, but I've called it question row. And of course, whether the answer is right or wrong, I've got to move the quiz forward to the next question. And then I also populate the question controls again. So that's where that one is called. It's called in check answer. OK, it's called in check answer when a question has been asked. If the question is wrong, you'll notice that the code is really, really similar. Except, of course, the text box says incorrect. The score for the quiz does not change. Um, I update the score on the form as well. And of course, I have to do this, whether the answer is right or wrong, I've got to push the quiz forward. And so I update the question number counter, which I've called question row. And as I've just explained, you could call it question counter or question number or whatever. And I also call populate question controls to uh, to set up the next form. Let me just run it again and I'll just try and explain this to you. Okay, take quiz. I've called populate question controls there for a special uh, time, but for the rest of the time it's going to come from check answer. Okay, so populate question controls for the first question has filled in this form. Okay, so that has run. We're waiting for an event. I'm going to go with 729. I click this button, bang, check answer is run for that method. It checks the 729 text on the form against the 729 um, in, the, uh, in the text of the array there. And we move on to the next question. So the question counter, which I called question row, didn't I, has gone from uh, 0 to 1 now. And again, what is 6 plus 3? It's 9. OK, so populate question controls have set all this up based on the check answer that I just ran. I run check answer again. It checks the text that that button 9 against the answer in the array. It says it's correct. And also, as I click off that, it runs populate question control again to do the check to find out whether the quiz ends or not or whether to write out 
this here. And then we run that again. There's no break point there, so it just carries on nicely now. OK, and 81 is correct. OK, so um, we'll close the quiz there. So um, that's what it does. Let's just uh, check these slides here to uh, see if it helps clarify what I've just been uh, saying verbally. OK, so what parameters should it take? Let's find it again. Check answer. I'm suggesting a, a, a two dimensional um, string. I'm suggesting an integer and I'm suggesting the answer from the text. Remember, these names here only mean anything between these two brackets here. OK, you could call that Paul. You could call that one. Uh, Sandy, you could call that one Brian. As long as they match in here, it doesn't matter. But obviously, it's important to try and give them uh, meaningful answers. So that's what goes into it. OK. So, yeah, it's a 2D array called column index answer in my version. OK. And um, as it says here, this bit getting the right bits of the question out and uh, indexing the 2D question array to find the question text and to find the um, answer text as well. This is probably the hardest part of it. This is, of course, all here to help you. And you might need to watch this video several times as well. OK, so it doesn't necessarily make sense immediately, but I hope that these demos are. OK, and here's the if else statement written out on two PowerPoint slides. OK, so if it's true, we do that and it carries on here. If it's false, we do that. That, of course, is just this written out on a PowerPoint slide for you. Remember what I said? The code is almost the same whether the person's got the uh, answer right or not. The difference is being. The little message box that I show says correct or incorrect. The score is either updated by one or stays the same. Uh, but everything else is the same. And we have to here, remember, move the question row or question counter forward each time that we do it. So that's my explanation there of check answer. So you've had three videos there. I've explained the different pieces of the code. I've um, explained that in Form 1 CS, you should be expecting to have this kind of structure. Here's the class where you store all the quiz scores and things like that. Here's the method that puts all the data onto the form and also performs the check to see whether or not the quiz is coming to an end or goes on to the next question. And here, probably the most complicated one, is the one that matches the, uh, the, uh, the text of the button with the text from the array. The key, I think, to this is making sure you know how to index arrays and how to pull the data out of them. Remember, they count from zero as well. That's important. So I hope that those have been useful and thank you for watching.